In this video, we'll be looking at evolution by natural selection. So um, this theory of natural selection is proposed by Charles Darwin, um, as many of you may already know. So uh, he was the first one to propose this, and uh, it is quite widely accepted uh, because of the different evidence that we've got presented, like I said before, about paleontology, so study of fossils with comparative biochemistry and comparative anatomy. It is quite uh, common for you to be asked in an exam question to describe how evolution by natural selection would occur. But what, will, what you'll need to notice is that they would never ask you just like that, describe how uh, an organism evolved by natural selection. It will almost always uh, mask and pretend to be something else. So they would probably introduce you to a completely new organism that you've never heard before. And then they would say something along the lines of how their environment has somehow changed. So what you'll need to know is to spot that that is what the question is asking, because they would say something like, uh, suggest how the organism has become, uh, has changed into different species over time or something along those lines. So you must know it's always about natural selection. So you will always need to refer to these few steps within your answer, but then you just have to make it a little bit more specific, perhaps uh, at points to refer to maybe particular adaptations those organisms may have or the specific selection pressures they may have. So the first thing you need to refer to is the fact that uh, the, within the population, there is pre-existing variation. So what we mean by that is that there are individuals within the population that have shown different adaptations. A, a way to think of this is let's say there's a group of humans and some humans have the ability to swim and some of the other ones don't, let's say for example. Now, as we are living uh, just as normal, um, there is no need to swim, but there is not a disadvantage for them being able to swim. So there is no particular selection pressure. However, let's say there is a change in the environment. So there is a change in the condition uh, let's say a flood came in. So we, we say in this case, there is now a selection pressure. So the selection pressure is for referring to the factor in the environment that causes some individuals to survive and the others to die. So in the example that I was using is let's say a flood came in. So suddenly uh, those individuals that are able to swim are, uh, are favored in this scenario. Whereas those that can't swim will probably die off because they can't survive in the flood. So there is a change in uh, selection pressure, which means that those that have certain variation will be, or well, we say those best adapted would survive and produce. Now it's really important that you refer to survive and reproduce as a phrase like that. So because a lot of people just say, oh, the best adapted individuals can survive and then that's it. Well, if they survive, but not reproduce, they then can't pass on the allele or the gene that actually gave them the adaptation to start with. So that would, if they don't reproduce, it will lead to the extinction of, across the entire species. So you have to say survive and reproduce, which will then enable them to pass on the favorable allele. So you can say advantageous or favorable allele that gave them that adaptation to start with. And this would be repeated over many generations. And over time, as it repeats, you would increase what we call the allele frequency. So the allele frequency is referring to the number of that particular favorable allele within the population. So the idea is that more and more individuals uh, would have that same allele. So more and more individuals have that same adaptation to allow them to survive. And if this continues over time, it can actually lead to what we call speciation when a new species is formed. So what we mean by that is not just that one adaptation that get passed on, but it was actually an accumulation of the different alleles within that has, you know, been inherited together with that favorable allele. So there might be loads and loads of uh, a big combination of different types of adaptations that ultimately make them so different from the original population that they can't reproduce to make fertile offspring anymore. So in this case, we call this speciation. There are just two different types of speciation, but you will learn more about that in, uh, in year 13. So these are the few steps that you would refer to when talking about evolution about any organism. So within a group, you can say there is uh, mutations happening, causing pre-existing variation. 
but then there's a change in the selection pressure or new selection pressure came in, causing some of the individuals that are best adapted to survive and reproduce, passing on the favorable allele. And as time goes on and this repeats, um, more and more of those that don't have the allele will die, and those with the favorable allele would reproduce uh, furthermore, increasing the allele frequency. So more and more individuals within that population have the same favorable allele. And along with the uh, inheritance of other alleles as well at the same time, over time that could lead to speciation, which is a, a, a rise of a completely new species, meaning they can no longer reproduce uh, with the original species to make fertile offspring. Keep in mind when answering exam questions, you might want to uh, specify or uh, specifically maybe what type of selection pressure you might be thinking about in in this case and perhaps which adaptation is favored in this case as well so you might say for example uh, is if for bacteria you can say there is a new antibiotic that was being used and those with the allele that allows them to resist that antibiotic will then be passed on for example so you want to phrase your answer to make it specific to that particular question but otherwise, it's always these few steps.